Welcome back to Let's Break Down Plastic with the University of Toronto Trash Team. We are a team of students, researchers, and volunteers on a mission to increase waste literacy and decrease plastic pollution. My name is Leah Chibwe, and I study Imagine and Priority Pollutants in the Environment. Today, we are going to help you understand the truth behind what happens to our recycling. We are often told that recycling is the best solution for our plastic waste, but some say recycling is a myth. So, what's the reality? Should it be treated as a priority, a last resort, or somewhere in between? Globally, we produce more than 350 million tons of plastic every year. That's the same weight as 70 million elephants. In fact, most plastic that has ever been produced has now become waste. Plastic waste can be managed in different ways. It can be incinerated, landfill, or recycled. But none of these options are perfect and all come with their own issues. Incineration of plastics can contribute to air pollution by releasing chemicals, including some greenhouse gases, and these cause climate change. Landfilling is not sustainable, as more waste requires more land. For both incineration and landfilling, we also need more raw materials to make new products. Recycling recreates products from waste materials, but Recycling will not solve our plastic pollution problem on its own. Let's dig into why. So, how does recycling actually work? In an ideal scenario, when you throw a piece of plastic into the recycling, it gets collected and transported to a materials recovery facility. Here, they sort the waste by material type and remove items that cannot be recycled either because of contamination or the lack of an industry to recycle that type of plastic. Plastic waste that can be recycled is then sent to be recycled into something new. This usually happens by mechanical recycling, a process more common than chemical recycling. Plastic waste is pressed into large bales or milled into smaller fragments before being reprocessed into pellets, which get melted down and, and molded to create new plastic items. Chemical recycling uses a combination of heat, pressure, and chemicals to convert plastic waste back into its original chemical building blocks, which are often used as fuel. The truth is, not all items you toss into the recycling bin actually get recycled. In fact, both Canada and the US only recycle an estimated 9% of their plastic waste. And why is this? One reason is that a lot of waste items are made from mixed materials that make it challenging to recycle. Take this ship back. It's made of plastic, foil, and paper layers that can't be separated. And take out coffee cups, have a thin film of plastic so that your drink does not lick. Also, if you don't clean your recycle, it contaminates the material, meaning it can't be recycled like this peanut butter jam, which goes right into the landfill. Unfortunately, cleaning food contamination of the material is not a part of the recycling process. Another reason is that recycling costs money and is more expensive compared to alternatives such as landfills. Often, manufacturing new products from scratch is cheaper. If there isn't an end market for something, or someone who wants to purchase recycled materials, then recycling facilities have no incentives to process it. So even if an item is technically recyclable, it isn't necessarily always recycled. Many people are not aware of this, and this is why recycling is sometimes referred to as a myth. What's more, many countries in the global north currently ship a large proportion of their waste to countries in the global south for so-called recycling, which is not a sustainable solution. The sheer amount of waste these countries receive from overseas is so huge that they cannot process it all. So instead, these materials end up being banned illegally or dumped in landfills or waterways, which creates risks to the environment and public health. When recycling works, it can be a good solution. 
However, it is only a part of the puzzle. Because we know that not all materials can be recycled, we cannot only rely on recycling to handle our waste. Instead, the other steps we should take before our waste reaches the recycling bin, something we call the solutions hierarchy. First, we need to refuse to produce waste unnecessarily. As an individual, you can do this by refusing to purchase items in single-use plastic packages. On a large scale, industries could design products with less plastic packaging or no packaging at all. Governments can facilitate these changes by banning items and encouraging models that deliver products to consumers with reusable or no packaging. When producing an item is inevitable, we need to make sure this item can be reused many times. That way, we would have less waste to manage. Recycling should only take place when we cannot refuse and reuse. And what other actions can businesses and individuals take? Businesses can be held accountable for the full life cycle of the products and packages they make and sell. This is called extended producer responsibility. They can be incentivized to make recyclable and reusable products. As consumers, we can avoid products and packaging that cannot be reused or recycled. We can also reach out to our governments and ask for support in making each of the above solutions more feasible. Also, know before you throw. Inform yourself of what can and cannot be recycled locally. Make sure items are properly sorted and cleaned before you throw them away. So, how can you be a part of reducing plastic pollution? Visit our website for tips and check out lots of other resources in the description box. Drop us any questions or thoughts you might have on plastics in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We hope you enjoyed today's video and learned more about what really happens to your recycling. Thank you for listening.